You're suddenly having a bad IFR day. As you approach your destination, you're on South Dakota, after a routine departure and a comfortable cruise in IMC, most of your panel abruptly goes dark. You still have basic flight instruments, including an electronic PFD and an HSI, which run on backup batteries. Your last communications with ATC included a clearance to an initial approach fix and expect the ILS runway 12 approach. But your GPS navigator, which includes navigation receivers, is now kaput, along with your second navcom. In other words, you have no moving map or course guidance in the panel, just attitude, airspeed, altitude, and heading. You can't even see a GPS track indicator. The basic troubleshooting procedures in the POH don't fix this issue, and the cause of the failure is something to investigate after you're safely on the ground, if you can descend through the Merck and fly an approach in weather that's close to the published minimums for the procedure. The good news is you have an iPad with a built-in GPS, or a tablet connected to an external GPS source, running ForeFlight or a similar app. The EFB confirms that your blue own ship symbol is tracking toward Humso, an initial approach fix that marks the beginning of a feeder route that takes you to the final approach course. Using just your track shown on the approach chart and your basic instrument flying skills, can you fly the approach? I practice such scenarios periodically during recurrent training. In my A36 Bonanza, operating under VFR with a safety pilot, I switched the navigation screen on my GTN 750XI to the traffic page, which provides no navigation information, and then I practiced getting to an airport and flying an approach using only the iPad for guidance. Of course, an iPad isn't a suitable RNAV system as defined in the AIM and FAA advisory circulars, but in IMC under IFR, this scenario qualifies as an emergency, and you can bend the rules as necessary to arrive safely. As you'll see in this video, a challenge like this is also an excellent workout in an aviation training device. Galvin Flying, the flight school in Seattle where I instruct, has two ATDs made by 1G. They simulate Cessna 172s, one with a G1000 panel, the other a hybrid round dial setup with two Garmin G5s. You can connect for flight to the Wi-Fi signal broadcast by each trainer, which sends position, altitude, speed, and other information to your tablet. As far as ForeFlight is concerned, you're flying. Just as in the airplane, provided your EFB can receive GPS signals, you have a good 2D navigation solution. If you can keep your blue airplane tracking along the lines on a geo-referenced approach chart, you'll follow the intended path. What you don't get, however, is any type of vertical guidance. It's up to you to establish and maintain a steady descent that keeps you as close as possible to an ILS glide slope or a GPS glide path for an approach to a DA or to the profile for a non-precision approach to an MDA. Flying an approach like this successfully requires mastery of fundamental instrument skills, what we used to call flying with only needle, ball, and airspeed. You must understand and be able to apply the control performance method of instrument flying, establishing the appropriate attitude, setting power and configuration, monitoring your progress, and making constant smooth adjustments as you proceed. In other words, it's a good test that takes you back to drills like flying Pattern A and Pattern B that you practiced early in your IFR training. Now let's jump in the ATD and see how accurately I flew two approaches with just the airplane symbol on an approach chart for guidance. First up is the ILS Runway 12 at Huron, South Dakota, starting at the Humso initial approach fix. As I get established on the feeder route, I descend to the charted altitude of 3,000 feet making small heading adjustments to stay on the line that marks the transition. As I approach the end of the feeder route, I set the heading bug to the inbound course and prepare to make a 90 degree left turn. Just as in the days before GPS guidance and turn anticipation, based on my airplane's position on the chart, I have to judge when to start the standard rate turn. I'm about 100 feet low at this point, but I'm stable, so I'll correct the altitude as I get established inbound. I'm almost at Beatty, the initial approach fix, stable at 90 knots. 
time to extend 10 degrees of flaps and set up my standard ILS descent profile in a Cessna 172. In this ATD, I adjust power to about 2,100 RPM and set a pitch attitude about 2.5 degrees below the horizon line. From this point, I fly the target pitch attitude and make small heading adjustments with shallow banks, trying to stay on the line that marks the final approach course until I emerge below the clouds. Again, this is a good example of the control performance method of instrument flying. I use the attitude indicator and tachometer to hold the control targets, and I check my progress on the chart occasionally to confirm the aircraft's performance along the approach. At this point, the runway starts to come into view. I'm right of center line, but correcting, and as I line up with the runway, the pappy shows that I'm slightly high but still in a comfortable position to continue a stable descent to the runway. Next, I try the RNAV Runway 18 approach at Winchester, Tennessee. This procedure offers only LNAV minimums to an MDA, which means I couldn't set up a steady descent all the way to the runway. Again, I started the turn to final a bit early, but the long leg inbound to the final approach fix allowed plenty of time to get established. As I ease over to the final approach course, I'm also descending to 2,900, the charted altitude for the leg to the final approach fix. At the final approach fix, I start the descent to the MDA, 1,420 feet, again using my standard final approach configuration for the Cessna 172. The ceiling is above the MDA, but the visibility beneath the clouds is poor. The runway isn't visible, so I continue cross-checking the instruments, the chart, and the outside view. Finally, the runway starts to emerge. I was a little high crossing the 2.5 mile fix, and even inside the VDP, I'm still at the MDA. But in a Cessna 172, I can start a stable descent to the runway, bringing this emergency approach to a safe conclusion. 